take time to refresh. Hey, don't be a part-time Christian. Just don't do it. It's not good for you. It's not good for your spiritual well-being. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What's your future and what's your hope? And when David said, hey, I'm living with God forever, for I will satisfy the weary soul. In every languishing soul, I will replenish. It says, I will replenish. That's that refreshing. Oh, you are so good, God. Oh, I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, that place me on the rock that stands. And I hold true to the one who breaks my fall oh, and lifts me time and time again. Oh my God, so good. You never give up. You never give up on me. Oh, what joy I found because of your love, because of your love for me. Oh my God, so good. You never give up. You never give up on me. Oh, what joy I found because of your love, because of your love for me. This grace out weighing all my shame. And I made you through the power of sacrifice. From death now, raised the life for yeah, yeah. Oh my God, so good. You never give up, you never give up on me. Oh, what joy I found because of your love, because of your love for me.
family. We are the Valley Church. We're in the valley. God is with me. And our mission as a church is to love God and love people. And we want to love God by praising Him, by praying, by listening to His Word, by giving offerings. And we want to love people. We want to love you by sharing this message with you, sharing this service with you, and also interacting in the chat. So now let's go to a word of prayer with Jenny. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for giving us one more day of life. Thank you that we are able to wake up every morning and and be able to be thankful to you, be able to glorify you, be able to be uh, a special friend to uh, all the people we know. I also pray right now for the people who are watching this video, for every one of them, that you bless them this week, that they can have a great, uh, a great week, a great month, a great year, that 2021 can be their year, this year, their year. And I pray for all the people in the hospitals still and with COVID or with any other sicknesses and, and illnesses and chronic illnesses and pains that you take care of them, that you bless them, that you help them be functional in, in their lives and that they can be with their families and that uh, they can get better, that you help them with all of that. I pray for the doctors, that you take care of them, for all the nurses, all the doctors that, that are always, uh, that might be able to get COVID any time, that you take care of them, that you take care of their families. And I pray for all of this. I pray for the Valley Church, that today can be a great day, that everybody that's watching can listen to the service, can listen to the message and put it in practice in their lives, their daily lives, and share this with other people so that more people can can see this message and it can be a blessing to them so that we can all be refreshed and have a great 2021 and even 2022 and all the other years that are to come. I pray all of this in your name. Amen. If you're lonely, longing for someone to hear you If your burdens feel like more than you can bear If you're searching for a place to just be honest Come just as you are if you're tired of just hoping for an answer If you're wishing you could let your God come down If you feel like you can hold it all together Come just as you are There's no need Really hiding at the Father's house, you met with open arms, and He gives grace without condition as you are with nothing else, just come. There is space for everyone who feels unworthy A place for those who never felt at home Where you don't have to wonder if you're wanted Come just as you are There's a hope
Come to Jesus. Come, come, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Church, it is so nice that, that you connected with us. We are the Valley Church, based in Mexico City, but online, we're everywhere and anywhere. And wherever you are connecting, put it in the chat. We'd like to know where you're at, how, where you're connecting from, who you are, what your name is, because we want to pray for you. We are a praying church. The prayer is the sauce that we put on everything. Like in Mexico, we have our salsa. And we put salsa on everything. And that's how we live and do the work of the ministry is with prayer. And we bathe everything in prayer. We want to pray for you too. That God bless you, keep you, take care of you. So let us know, please. We want to know where you are. We're a family. We love and we, we, we operate as a family. We want to know you, get to know you, and know that you have a family in us. You can count on us. We're your friends. We're, we're, we're your brothers, we're your sisters. We want to be a family with you. And speaking of family, we are part of an extended family. We, in Mexico, we, be, we belong to a network of churches called Rebi. It, it's, it's a network of uh, Bible Baptist churches. We're interdependent Baptists. I mean, that doesn't even exist, but that's who we are. We think that if we work together, we can do more for the kingdom. So we're interdependent Baptists. But we're also missionaries sent from the States. And we belong to the Baptist Bible Fellowship International. And it's a fellowship of churches that work together precisely to be able to reach the world for Jesus Christ. And we have a sending church in Mexico from Monterey, uh, but we also have a sending church from the United States, Fort Worth, Texas, Alliance Church. And our pastor there, Brother Terry Kaiser, Pastor Terry Kaiser, he's going to bring us the message today in the Valley Church. So uh, get out your notebook, pay attention. He's going to talk about how to be refreshed in this new year of 2021. We need to be refreshed and uh, uh, he's going to bring a great message. Please give him all your attention. We love you, Pastor. Thank you for sharing us the word of God today. God bless. Good morning, church family. I'm excited to be with you guys today. So when you get on, if you would say good morning, hello, you know, give us a, a little comment so we know you're here and you're watching and everything's working like it's supposed to, that will help us. And we're excited to be with you. I pray God's blessings on you. And uh, the title is Time to Refresh. And so uh, hopefully you will be encouraged by it today and it'll be helpful to all of us. I asked mama to please leave my Christmas tree up, so she did, but pretty much everything else has been <laughs> taken down around the house and stored away, but I like the Christmas tree, so she left it up for me. And I'm glad because it makes a pretty backdrop this morning. Hey, there's something I want to tell you guys about before we get started today. And so uh, 
we have been kicking around different ideas for just a special day for our church. So the second Sunday in February is February 14th. And that's kind of the day that we had circled to have just something special for our church family. On February 14th, we're going to have I Love My Church Sunday. And I Love My Church Sunday, I've said it for years, the church is not the building, the church is the people. And so this is a great opportunity for us to just celebrate the community that God has brought together, whether physically or like this digitally. We are emotionally connected to each other. We care about each other. We love each other. February 14th for some people is a, a hard day, right? And for other people, it's a romantic day. And for other people, it's a nothing day. And so we're going to make it as good as we possibly can, February 14th, which is Valentine's Day, but it's also now I Love My Church Sunday. And so meaning I love my church family, not I love those bricks and those chairs and that carpet. Although we want to respect those things and we thank God for those things, what we love are the people that make up the Ministry of Alliance. And so it's a day to celebrate. It's a day to worship. It's a day to communicate. And what I want us to do is communicate appreciation. So there's a lot of people who do a lot of work to uh, just keep things going forward, whereas kids ministry or maintenance ministry or the sound text that you never see. So everyone uh, has a place where they're serving and they're working. And I just think it's a good day to communicate appreciation. And, and I love you because I love you because of your joy. And so communicating that appreciation is very important and we want to do that. And so not one person, but I mean, as many, just exhaust yourself communicating appreciation to the people who make up a part of your church family. And so do that. And then it's a day to demonstrate, to demonstrate love for one another. And so acts of kindness, those random acts of kindness. And so be creative, be thoughtful, think that through. And what can you do to show kindness to someone that you wouldn't normally do? And let that be a part of our day. Okay, so that's that's that announcement. Now, I have my stuff here I wanted to show you guys. So this is my journal that I use and I have a pen and I have a pencil and I have a yellow and I have a blue highlighter. And I use pretty much everything but the blue highlighter on a daily basis. And then occasionally I will use my blue highlighter. I start my day sitting down with my journal. I put the date, I put the day, and then I write something usually about the weather or what's going on. And then I'll get into my Bible reading plan. And then I'll do my Bible reading plan. And Miss Cheryl posted one. I'm actually using that one. It's different than the one I normally use. And I get my Bible and I open up my Bible and I follow along. And I don't know, yeah, I have my headphones. And so I use my headphones with my phone and I push play on my Bible. And so I listen to it and I read it. I just feel like I get more by doing that. And so I use my Bible. I use my phone app that also plays the Bible for me. And then when I get into genealogies, it doesn't slow me down one bit because they practice and practice and practice to say those words. And I don't even have to think about it. OK, so that helps me. Also, it helps me to hear and see. It's just the way my brain works and how I learn. And so get your Bible. I'm trying to hold it so the camera can see it. So get your Bible, get your phone or however you listen or whatever you do. And some people are like, you need to slow down a little bit and just have your Bible. And that's fine. If that's what works for you, do that. If something different works for you, do that. The point is to spend time every day in God's Word. And then I have a book. My kids bought me a new book for Christmas, and so I'm reading it, The Post-Quarantine Church. Pretty funny. Uh, and this is just a result of post-quarantine church, I think. I don't think we're out of quarantine yet, but I think by spring break we will be. That's my prediction. 
And if I'm wrong, I'm okay with that. I'm fine if I'm wrong. But I think by springtime and the sun's coming out and burning off the germs and it's warming up that most of this is going to be behind us. And I'm grateful for that. So get you your journal, get you your Bible, get you a book and start your day or finish your day in God's word. Okay. Uh, which goes back to time to refresh. I don't mean it's time like January 1st. I mean, take time to refresh yourself. And uh, I think we all need that refreshing. Uh, Cheryl and I were amazed when we went into Home Depot, I guess during sometime in early December, and pretty much all the Christmas decorations that they had put out were gone. And it's just like, <gasps> Golly, and then we went into Hobby Lobby. Uh, we were doing some things at the church when we went to Hobby Lobby, and we were just, I mean, it was amazing how much stuff people bought this year at Christmas time. And I know part of that's because you can't travel and you can't do anything else, and people remodeled their houses and done all kinds of work that way and, and uh, decorated their outsides. And so more Christmas lights this year than I've ever seen before. And so that's pretty cool. And yet it's, it's just shocking to me how much stuff people bought at Christmas time. And uh, for us, maybe when we get to 2021 and we're thinking about this idea of refresh. So during the, during the Christmas break sometime, Cheryl and I were up at the church, we were doing some work. And uh, we started to look around and like, oh, wow, there's quite a few things that need to be refreshed up here that need to be, you know, redone and refreshed and fixed and repaired and that sort of thing. And so I started thinking about all of that. And so I came up with this idea. But when I say refresh, here's what I'm really thinking about. A refresh your marriage. And so I was talking to someone the other day about do y'all date? And on Facebook, I've seen a few of my friends and they're out on dates already in, in the new year. Uh, Cheryl and I on New Year's Day, we went to the lease and spent the day together. And I know you always say, well, that's not really a date. But for us, we like to spend that time together. And it was a good day for us and our puppies. And so we did that. So refresh your marriage, maybe refresh your family. Well, your family's not where you want it to be with your kids and maybe your parents, whatever that is. And you take some time this year to refresh your family, uh, maybe refresh your relationships. And I need, you know, you ever said, I need better friends and maybe you need to be a better friend and think that through and consider that if you will, maybe you need to refresh your finances. I know that there's some people that must have way overspent at Christmas time, either that or they're rich one or the other. And so it's time to refresh your finances. And I try to encourage people, Hey, get out of debt get a plan to get out of debt if it takes you five or seven or ten years get a plan and start heading in that direction and stay on your path and get out of debt so maybe you need to refresh your finances maybe you need to refresh your walk with god which is what i started with your bible your journal your prayer time your community your connection your service reconnect with god your commitment to to church and hey don't be a part-time christian just don't do it it's not good for you it's not good for your spiritual well-being and so recommit or refresh your walk with god uh, re refresh your community involvement meaning i know people say community that's my neighborhood we'll talk about that later but what i'm talking about in community is your faith community and the people that you live life with and where you get your values from and uh, people who speak into your life and and your your faith community, like your life group, like your equip group, whatever that is, and you get involved in your group and you pray for each other and you love each other and you help one another, and you support one another, uh, and then refresh your your service to others, whether that's working in kids ministry or on the tech team or on the grounds and maintenance team, whatever that may be. Uh, I posted yesterday that we had a man, Martin and Kathy. Martin came, I think, two weeks before Christmas, and I met him, and he's a nice gentleman, and he lives right in our neighborhood. 
and we were going to get together and and then before we could even do that he got COVID and they were in the hospital and I asked you guys uh, at the prayer vigil to pray for them and uh, they're both home now but they're really sick and so two days ago Ronnie and Sandy took them a meal yesterday I took them a meal and so today George is taking them a meal and I've asked people hey if you can help and because they can't cook it makes it harder because they can't even warm it I mean they feel horrible I just can't describe to you guys but they're right here in our neighborhood they live right off Trace Ridge and so it's really easy to find off of North Tarrant and so if you can help with that please let us know please let Miss Cheryl know and let's serve let's serve others and so maybe you need to refresh your serve uh, I know this when people get really down and they start getting depressed and lonely and isolated and all that uh, it's because they're not doing things for others and so it might help you to get up and get your clothes on and go out and go to a restaurant and get a meal for a family and take it to them and drop it on their porch and then let them know that you've set it on their porch and then pray for them it might do you a world of good to serve some other people and so I encourage you to do that if you would uh, I want to read a passage for you this is the 23rd Psalm and of course it's a new year and I'm very sentimental about these things and and so I'm gonna read the 23rd Psalm for us because I'm, I'm hoping one it's very familiar with you and two it has a particular purpose in the reading of this Psalm for the topic of the day and here's what David writes the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want that word want means need I don't have any needs God takes care of me he's my shepherd he provides for me he takes care of me he makes me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters and it just means God's giving you his absolute best he's giving you his best verse 3 says he restores my soul and that is my prayer today for our church family is that you would recognize that God is the one that restores or refreshes you and me and and I want that refreshing for us he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake and I, I sent a message this morning to the pastors that you know I encourage and love on and and I told them hey let's go shine his lights in a world that is dark we have an enemy who's a liar and he lies to us but if we walk quote, close enough with the Lord we can recognize when deception is present and pay attention to that and and let's walk with the Lord and uh, he says at verse 4 even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for you are with me you are with me do you have the confidence that no matter what you're going through no matter what your circumstances are that the Lord is with you you know he says I will never leave you and I will never forsake you but how many times have we had this feeling that the Lord has left us and how is it that David had that understanding that you are with me and why don't we have that what is it about our understanding it's not about God's character and it's not even about God's presence it's about us and our mind and our own belief system that makes us think that at some point God would bail you are with me even in the darkest of times your rod and your staff they comfort me your correction and your guidance they bring me comfort let's not be so stubborn and so uh, headstrong that we do not allow correction from the Lord let's not live our lives that way that's a dangerous thing to do uh, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil my cup overflows and you just see God working in your life even in the midst of obstacles even in the midst of uh, opposition and uh, this pressure that comes from the world and it's like the wolves are out there all around the edge and the Lord is just delighted in the time that we spend with him and he's not at all fearful 
of the dangers that lurk. It's not that he's unaware. He's not fearful. And I love that. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Do you know that today? Do you know that goodness and mercy follow you? That God's goodness and God's mercy is always there with us? Isn't that good? And it's just anointing to us. My, I forgot to tell you this. My cup overflows. That just means more, more than, more than, more than, more than. Man, so cool. Uh, we love it when our kids come over. We love it when our kids call. Last night, Lainey called and talked to Cheryl for, I don't know, an hour or more, just talking to her mama. And it's just so encouraging to us when our kids, you know, call us and say, I just need to talk for a while. It's really cool. So Lainey and Aaron are talking to Cheryl and I'm on the couch, you know, half out of it. And so they have a really good conversation. And, and I just thank God for that. It's just those blessings. If you don't, if you pay attention to it, you don't miss those blessings. Surely goodness and mercy, mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What's your future and what's your hope? Well, David said, hey, I'm living with God forever. And that's my hope. I'm living with God forever. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's our hope. And, and death is not a threat. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And so I think David had that understanding. And we would do well to know that. The point of the psalm for today is he restores my soul. He's the one that refreshes us. He's the one that brings new life into us, uh, that blessed life, that eternal life, that, that forever abundant life that he has for you and me. But, but time, it takes time to refresh. Take your notes, write down what the Holy Spirit is leading you. Pay attention to what the word of God is teaching you. Listen, take the time to refresh. Take the time to be the spouse you need to be, the parent or the child or the friend or the church member. Take time to be those things. Don't get so busy about your life that you absolutely schedule everyone and everything else out of it because of your pursuit. Take time to refresh. I have this verse in Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 25, for I will satisfy the weary soul and every languishing soul I will replenish. It says, I will replenish. That's that refreshing. You get out there and sometimes we do that. Sometimes we go and go and go. And then like me today, I'm kind of, you know, sickly and puny and so your body says, okay, I've had enough and I need to rest. And so it makes you rest. And, and I think when we rest in the Lord and not from the Lord, we're better off. And let him get, give you that replenishing that you need. Listen, you can't starve yourself to death spiritually and then ask God, where are you? Because he's in his word. He's in his people. He's in worship. He's in creation. You're not taking time for any of those things. He's not really in your workforce. He helps us in our work, but he doesn't celebrate that we work 90 hours or 70 hours or 65 hours a week. He doesn't really celebrate that. It may be necessary and he'll help you get through that season, but that's not his goal for us to be human doings. It's his goal for us to be human beings, to love people, to minister to one another, to pray for one another, to encourage one another, to worship him, to read his word, to spend time with him, uh, to fellowship with him, to walk with him, to, to share in his work of reaching the world with the gospel. That's his desire for us. Uh, here's another one. Uh, well, it's the same verse, but it's in the NLT. It says, for I have given rest to the weary and joy to the sorrowing. So rest for the weary, I would say that's probably me today. 
and and joy for the sorrowing i know what that's like and uh, i know what it's like to get your joy back and so i'm telling you from experience the lord knows how to give you your joy back you may think it's impossible but it is not and if you will do these things that we're talking about today you take time to refresh and you read god's word and you pray and you fellowship with other believers and uh you worship the lord publicly and privately those things replenish us they refresh us and god has that refreshing for you for me uh i wanted to share this with you in john chapter 14 this is a very important piece to me of what we're doing uh, this is where Jesus is teaching about the coming of the Holy Spirit. And, and so I just want to encourage us to live spirit-led lives. Not self-led, not American-led, not news-driven, not that, not populist, not popularity, not population-driven. <clears throat> Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. His commandments in a nutshell is love God and love people. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper. I'm a helper. I'm going to leave. And another helper is coming. He's known as the Holy Spirit. Even the Spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him or knows him. But you know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. You know him. Guys, if you're a born-again believer in Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit of God. Now, you have, you may have trained yourself not to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, but you can change that today. You can take time to refresh your relationship with God by learning to listen to the Holy Spirit. And I would say this. Let's be careful about telling God what to do. And let's be more mindful of what he's trying to tell us that he wants for us and of us. So let's quit trying to be the boss and let's let God be Lord in our lives and let the Holy Spirit guide us and allow him to speak to us far more than us speaking to him if that makes any sense to you. Lord, teach me, guide me, give me wisdom. Show me what you want. I'm telling you all, for most of my ministry, I have uh, desired the good idea from the Lord. What is it that you want for us, for our kids, for our marriage, for our church family? What is it that you desire from us? And I think a lot of Christians don't care what the Holy Spirit has to say. They only care what they have to say. They don't care where the Holy Spirit is leading. They only care about what they want. And that is a very dangerous, plightful place to live. And so I believe that Alliance is a church, church family, that highly values the leading, the voice of the Holy Spirit of God. And I'm asking for God to lead us and to help us to do his will and his work in our lives and in our community. So one of the things I wanted to tell you guys before we sign off today is we want to get ready for company. A lot of people before the holidays, they'll start looking around and, like, oh, we need new carpet and we need flooring and we need new cabinets and we need new paint and all this kind of stuff. And so before the holidays get here, they want to get ready for company. And a part of our getting ready for Easter is our outreach that we do for Easter. If you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. And I don't plan to fail. I plan to be successful. And if we have to make a change, we will. Okay, does that make sense to you? Uh, I really honestly think 2021 is time. It's time for us to reach our community and our online community. So if you can help us with that, please do so. Here's my prayer. In the book of Romans, Paul writing, he's talking to the Romans. He's like, man, I really want to come. I really want to come and I want to be with you. 
And here's what he says, Romans chapter 15 and verse 32. So that by God's will, I may come to you with joy and be refreshed in your company. I'm telling you, I would love nothing more than for people to come to Alliance and leave like, wow, that was such a refreshing experience for us. It wasn't a bother, bother, it wasn't a burden, it wasn't cumbersome, it wasn't awkward, it was just refreshing. And would y'all pray with us that Alliance would be a place of refreshing for people? They come in and, and, it, and it renews their zeal, their excitements, their desire for God. Not to come and hang out with us because we're cool people, but to serve an almighty God who can change their eternity. That's my prayer for us. That's my prayer for you and for me. Here's my friend Tom said. He told me this last Sunday. He said, you know, I don't think I've ever told anyone this before in my life, but my life got better when I came here and I met you. I'm telling y'all in my heart of hearts, I would love for that to be said a thousand times over, that my life got better when I came to this church family and got involved in this faith community and started serving God together with y'all. Wouldn't that be an amazing thing to have happen? I pray that Alliance is a place of refreshing. Uh, guys, it's time to refresh. If your marriage needs it, give it that attention. If your relationships with your family needs it, take those little steps, guys. It doesn't have to be spanning the Royal Gorge. It can be as simple as text messages and phone calls and prayer and time. You, you don't have to eat the whole elephant in a bite. Start. My, my, my encouragement to you is, is start. Just start and let God work in our lives to accomplish his will. And at the end of 2021, May we see the impact and the difference that God has made in our lives and through our lives for other people. I'm praying for you all. Cheryl and I are praying for our church family. We love you. We thank God for you. And we want God's best for you. And if there's any way we can help, we want to. On our website is the next steps. And if there's any ministry we can do for you, please don't hesitate to ask. Communicate with us ask us let us help we want to be stronger in 2021 take that time to refresh refresh your spirit refresh your ministry your service your commitment to the lord your community your faith community if that's what we need to do then don't hesitate let's do that uh, and let's see god work in our lives and in our church family as we do our best to serve him and reach others with the gospel. I love you guys. Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for our time. I thank you for the day. I thank you, Lord, that you allow me to be here and in this way and to teach and to share uh, the heart that you have. I pray, God, that you keep our church family safe as they work and as they go to school and live lives, Lord, that we would uh, be salt and light in a world that desperately needs you, that we would stand in the gap between a holy God and a world that is incredibly lost. Help us, Lord, to share Christ, to lift up Jesus, to be guided by your spirit. Teach us, Lord. Teach us what to say and when to say it. Help us to guard our words and to guard our life, that we would be holy and pure that you would use us this year for your good will. Thank you, Lord, for your promise to be with us. Thank you for the refreshing that comes from you. And I ask that your spirit would lead our lives and our church in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, guys, thank you for joining today. Uh, if we can do anything for you, let us know. And as I say, as you go, go with God's grace and peace. I love you guys. Happy Sunday. Thank you so much for connecting with us, for watching the entire service, not just watching it, but being part of it. 
for participating, for interacting with us. We appreciate it. We appreciate it so much. And if you've been blessed by the message and want to donate to spread the good news, to spread this message and for us to make more services and, and, and to keep growing, then I encourage you to donate, to give, because it, it is better to give than to receive. Jesus says it in the word of God. And if you want to give, the information will be on the screen so that you can bless this church. Last but not least, like this video, share it with all your contacts so that your contacts can also be blessed by this message, and subscribe so that we can see you next week. Bye-bye.